Hi, it's Will from StormTheCastle.com, and here on YouTube, you know me as Epic Fantasy, and I'm here in the Wizard Sanctum. Give me a thumbs up if you like the Wizard Sanctum. I get a lot of my projects back here, a lot of the projects that I've done in the past, and I'm thinking about giving some of this stuff away, so um, leave a comment if you want me to start giving away some of these. I got weapons and armor and all kinds of crazy stuff. Uh, well, anyway, um, today's tutorial is not so much a how to make something, it is more an informational video about sword making and steel and why the steel is the most important thing when it comes to making a sword. So uh, let's take a look first at what steel is. Steel is iron with a very small amount of carbon added to it. By a very small amount, uh, typically less than 1%. And that's, that's it. When you add that small amount of carbon to the steel, it uh, changes the prop uh, to the iron. It changes the properties significantly. Iron is very malleable and soft, and steel is very hard and durable and has strength. It has um, something called toughness. And uh, interesting thing though is that as you add more carbon, it gets stronger and stronger and tougher and tougher and harder and harder. But it can get to the point where you've added too much carbon for swords and uh, the steel can shatter or crack or break. So when you hit something, right, it can actually crack or shatter even or just break. And so we don't want that either. So there is a range where the amount of carbon in the steel is about right. And that range typically is around 0.6%. Um, so less than 1%, 0.6, 0.5, 0 0.7, somewhere in there. And that will vary depending on other things like if there's any chromium or vanadium or other things added into the steel and how it was hardened and tempered. And also the length of the blade. Like if you're using a cutlery knife, you can have a much, much harder steel because you're not really worried about flexibility like that. But with a sword and such a long blade, you need the toughness and the flexibility balanced with the, the um, hardness so you can also hold an edge. So that's a balancing act. It's very, very important. And like I said, I made this sword out of mild steel and it cost me $15. And if you want to make a sword out of a high carbon steel, which is what you should make it out of, it's probably going to cost you for the same piece of steel in terms of size, $60 or $80. So there's the trade-off. There's a big difference, but you can, with with you know that kind of a steel, a high carbon steel, you'll actually have a real sword instead of a sword shaped object like this mild steel one right here. So in this video, we'll take a look um, at the forging process and I'll show you making of the blade of this and how I made it while you followed all the typical sword making steps and use the sword forge and, and, and the hammer and the anvil and all of that. And then we'll take a look at why this sword is actually no good as a sword. Dioramas, origami, catapults, and trebuchets, telescopes, terrariums, bonsai trees, and paper games, swords and shields, and real blacksmithing, model boxes, animation. I teach you how to feel creation. StormyCastle.com. Let's make something. All right, so there is the steel. Flat bar, plain steel, 36 inches long, and uh, it is a mild steel. It probably has anywhere between 0.1 and 0.3% um, carbon in it. Somewhere around there, which is way too soft. It's still going to keep the properties of iron. But the first thing I did was cut the point on the hardy tool. And then we heated it and shaped that point with a smaller hammer. Rounded it out a bit. I had a lot of fun with this project. It was just, you know, good to do some hammering and some heating. But there you go. There's the point of the sword. Looks good. Um, if you're interested in blacksmithing, sword making, or knife making, I have a lot of tutorials, a lot of videos here on my website, here on my YouTube channel, and also a lot of stuff, including where to get the steel and what kind of steels to get, on my website. So next thing I'm doing is edge hammering. Near edge hammering, that's called, and what that does is it reduces the size of the steel there over the anvil, and that's how we're making the tang. Uh, the tang is the part where the handle goes uh, goes over. So this is the other end of the sword from the point, and now I'm drawing out the tang. See it? 
I just continue heating and drawing it out like that to make it thinner and longer. And that added a couple inches to the sword because that steel has to go somewhere. But I like it. Now this is called a full tang sword. The tang and the sword blade are all one piece of steel. That's, and that's important for a good sword. And then from here it's the beveling, which I do on the anvil like this, on the edge of the anvil, so I can bevel the edges. And I didn't do all of this sword. There's no real, real reason for me to do it. But just to show you uh, one way to do it. You know, and beveling like this takes a lot of practice, but I really, really enjoyed the process of not using power tools on this. You know, call me old-fashioned. So now this sword forge. We are entering the stage now where we would harden and temper that steel. Uh, get it? So it was, has the right toughness, it has the right hardness, so it is suitable for a sword. So those are also factors. And about the sword forge, if you want me to do a video on making a sword, this sword forge, let me know. Give, leave a comment, give me a thumbs up. Um, maybe I'll do a video on how to do this, but the important thing here is instead of a circular fire pot, we have a long line of heat with a blower so we can heat up the whole sword at the same time. And uh, the first step we do is harden the sword and we heat it up to the temperature, I think it's around 1500, I'd have to, it's on the website. Um, it's red glowing hot and uh, a magnet will no longer stick to it. That is called Curie temperature and it is that's the hardness temperature, and then we could um, quench it. But look, doesn't that look good? <clears throat> I didn't get it all heat up to temperature. I get maybe two-thirds of it. But it does look good. I like it. But you'd have to watch it carefully. Move it around. Make sure the heat is even. And then uh, quench it. And as far as the quench goes, a lot of people ask me, water, oil, what do you use? Well, that depends on the steel. You know, um, some steels require uh, an oil quench and some require a water quench. And when you buy the steel for your sword, you would know this. They'll tell you. And there are charts for the different types of steels. So now we, um, it's hard, well technically, although I really couldn't get this sword hard enough because of the low uh, carbon content. But the next step we would do would be to temper it. And that's where we soften it up a bit. So it has some um, toughness. And if it was hardened, if we left it hardened, it would be easy to shatter or crack or break. So we temper it to soften it up a bit so it has some toughness and some flexibility. And we do this by heating it up to about 500 degrees. <clears throat> and you can see I used the emery paper on it to clean it up because we know we get to the right temperature by the color of the steel. We get it to a wheat, like a golden wheat color and that means it's um, the right temperature for temper, it's tempered. And then we would quench it. I'll show you a little bit more of that wheat color. There you go, you can see it. Um, if, we go, if, we, if you overheated it, it would start to turn a plum color and that means you softened it up too much. And you, and you would want to re-harden and re-temper. So that's it, I added the handle, the pommel, let me see, a brass guard, um, a zebra wood handle and a steel pommel and I peened over the tang on that pommel. You can see holes there but I didn't I didn't um, pin it. I peened over the tang on the pommel. That's it. Let's Now let's take a look at the sword and what happens. Alright, so, alright, so let's take a look at this mild steel sword and why mild steel is no good for sword making and uh, why the, in other words, why the steel is the most important thing when it comes to making a sword. There's our mild steel sword. And there we go. That's that. 
So it's, we still have too many of the properties of, of iron in it. It's, it's very malleable and very soft. And it just isn't going to hold an edge. And it isn't going to... It doesn't have the toughness. Let's see if I can do some more here. That's it. This will be fun. Right? Even though it's steel. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> That's too funny. Come on. Hey, did you know that the Vikings, um, when they buried a, a man with his sword, they would bend it like this in order to um, prevent, you know, uh, theft of it. it? Would be useless as a sword. But there you go. <laughs> there was our sword. Mild steel. The steel is the most important thing. When it comes to making a sword, I love it. It's, it's great. Hey, imagine fighting somebody with that. Imagine being quite confusing. They wouldn't know how to attack you. Maybe you could catch their sword in there or something like that, right? <laughs> Thanks for watching that video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're a subscriber, Thanks for subscribing to my channel. If you're not a subscriber, hit that button. I always have lots of fun and interesting and very creative projects. I do two new ones every week. As an example, here's a couple more videos you might want to watch.